Hi, and welcome to the IDAP Center for Rehabilitation Research at the Toronto Rehabilitation Research Institute. Uh, Toronto Rehab is the number one adult rehabilitation research institute in the world, and we are thrilled to have you here today. I'm Dr. Jennifer Campos. I'm a scientist here at Toronto Rehab. Uh, where, you f where we find ourselves right now is several stories below ground at 550 University Avenue in a lab we call the Challenging Environment Assessment Lab, or SEAL for short. Uh, the research priorities that we, hear, that we have here at Toronto Rehab are to solve big real world problems. So that includes things like preventing illness and injury, uh, like falls or vehicle collisions, making sure that older adults are staying healthy, independent, and mobile in their homes for as long as possible, and making sure that when people do find themselves in hospital, that they can get home as quickly as possible. So, in order to achieve these research priorities um, efficiently, we use simulation technologies for some of our research. So what simulators allow us to do is to create or recreate sort of the real world challenges, but to do so in a safe and in, in a controlled way. So in SEAL, we have four simulators. Uh, from here, we can see three of them. So to give you an example, we have Winter Lab, which is here to my right. That allows us to recreate the uh, the challenges of a harsh Canadian winter. So that includes icy ground surfaces, cold winds, and, and cold temperatures. And, uh, and so some of the research we're doing in there is to optimize mobility in winter conditions. And we do that, for example, by trying to develop and test safe winter footwear. On my left, you can see Driver Lab. This is our newest simulator. It is a driving simulator. Um, here, we will be testing uh, how we're going to be able to optimize uh, driving performance and driver safety, um, optimize the design of vehicles and the design of driving simulators. Um, but today, we're here to feature Street Lab. And so if you come with me, I will show you Street Lab, which is our virtual reality simulator here at iDAPT. So coming inside here, uh, just to orient you, um, Participants in Street Lab are fully immersed in a curved uh, projection screen, fully surrounded by a curved projection screen, which also projects onto the floor surface. There are also uh, speakers behind uh, the, the screen, which allows for us to present surround sound. And our participants can interact with these vir in virtual environments by, for instance, as Dr. Barang Keshavars is doing here, a scientist who works with us, uh, walking on a treadmill. Um, of course, the virtual environment depends on the research question of interest, but here you can see um, a fairly high resolution of several city blocks of downtown Toronto that's part of our virtual Toronto database. Uh, so just to give you an example of um, a research project that we've done here, uh, we were very much interested in why it is that older adults with hearing loss uh, are three times more likely to fall than older adults who do not have hearing loss. And this is a really important question because in Canada, Canada, hearing loss is the uh, third most prevalent chronic health condition in older adults. And so um, what Street Lab allowed us to do was to be able to test these hypotheses we had about the relationship between hearing loss and mobility or walking stability and falls, um, again, in a realistic um, and safe way. So here in Street Lab, we could uh, recreate a typical challenge that you might experience when walking um, across University Avenue and having a conversation with your friends that may have the effect of compromising your listening ability and, of course, compromising mobility. But in order to be able to evaluate whether or not mobility or balance has been compromised, uh, we want to be able to very carefully measure uh, the movements of the body and the walking, um, and the walking movements as they happen. Um, so we do have an audience question. So how many researchers are at Toronto Rehab? When you consider scientists, graduate students, staff, technicians, it's around 500. We have another audience question. Um, well, Street Lab, because it is a virtual reality environment, what it allows us to do is to kind of create the environmental constraints that we're interested in evaluating. So some of the work we've done in here has been in multitasking. Um, I mentioned that we are interested in the re relationship between hearing loss and falls, but in an extension of that, we're interested in hearing aid technologies and how to optimize hearing aid technologies, not just in sort of uh, a situation where you're having a conversation in a restaurant, but again, when you, during mobility-related tasks. 
Okay, so um, on that note, I'm going to tell you a little bit more, as I mentioned, about how we are able to uh, capture the movements of the body during various mobility-related tasks um, using these, this motion capture technology. So if you follow me over here, you'll see Roger, who's our SEAL technician and our motion capture expert, demonstrating the motion capture technologies. So you can see that Roger's been outfitted with several reflective markers on important parts of the body. Uh, these cameras that are behind Roger here with the red lights. Um, those are um, monitoring and measuring the relative position of these markers. And so if you look on the screen over here, you can see the software that is, um, that is recording these movements very precisely so that later we can go um, and analyze uh, the data offline. So some people may be familiar with this technology as it's used in animated movie development or video game development um, whereby real human movements are being captured and then used to animate uh, virtual characters so that they look like they're moving as realistically as possible. So on that note, this con concludes our tour. Um, I would like to end by saying that we are very keen on having people come and visit us here at IDAPT. We are very interested in collaborations. The research facilities here are not just for Toronto rehab scientists, but they're available for everybody to use. We're also very much interested in having people come from the community and participate in our studies, and we love to give tours. So if you'd like some more information about how to get involved or how to get, uh, or, or how to get more information or, or or engage with us, um, then please visit our website at www.idapt.com. So we have an audience question. So the research in terms of um, hearing loss and balance, it, it, it's it's a, it's a bit of a complicated question to answer, but what we find is that when you have a listening task that is too hard, then it can compromise mobility um, and walking safety. If you have a task that's relatively easy, it doesn't really make much of a difference. But during these sort of moderately difficult secondary tasks, sometimes it can actually make you walk safer. So sometimes we find that older adults, particularly those without hearing loss, um, if they do have a secondary task that sort of um, makes them, uh, sort of challenges their ability to do two things at once or to multitask, they actually use what we call a posture first uh, priority, which means that they tend to walk a little bit straighter and a little bit uh, more safer. So they're basically prioritizing their walking safety over their listening performance. We have another audience question. I was so excited when I heard about the the, uh, the building of IDAP. This is this is fairly new. It was it was launched in 2011, and when I heard about it, I was doing research in Germany, and a lot of my research outcomes were not really being applied. So I was really excited to learn about the mechanisms about how people are in their movement. But I really wanted to find um, a way to apply that knowledge. So at IDAP, because the the focus is really trying to find practical ways to apply knowledge by creating products, by changing policy, by changing practice, that had incredible appeal to me. So I feel really fortunate to be working in this environment. Uh, another audience question. Has research in Street Lab informed policy? So there, I can give you one example. Uh, some work by Alison Novak and colleagues um, was uh, very much interested in, in understanding how uh, the geometry of stairs, residential stairs, um, could help to protect people to avoid falling. Um, so basically, they made some recommendations to increase the rise, so sort of the depth of the step um, in residential homes um, in order to make those staircases safer, and that was implemented into the uh, Canadian Building Code. Another audience question. So for students who are interested in getting involved in rehab research, okay, so 
certainly one of the best ways to get involved is to actually come and participate in research studies. So the best way to really become immersed and understand what's going on here is that some of our studies um, really um, are interested in testing healthy younger participants. And that's because, again, we're very much interested in prevention and that goes across the spectrum of different populations. Um, so volunteering is another opportunity. We have a great volunteer resources here at Toronto Rehab and students can get through, can go through that. There's internship programs of course graduate studies undergraduate thesis work um, the best way to go about that is uh, is to talk to the office of the research trainees or um, it is it is a very good idea if you identify and a particular scientist who's doing something that really excites you and motivates you to send them an email and get in contact with them because scientists are always keen to talk to interested students so um, I think that's it. If there's no more questions, I'd like to say thank you again for joining me. I'm Dr. Jennifer Campos signing off, and thanks for watching.